In this video, I propel you to go deeper into Christ, to have a greater dimension of intimacy with Him. Enjoy and please subscribe. Father, we glorify the name. Magnify the Yeshua. I want you to find yourself on top of the mountain. Something the Lord showed me just now in engaging that we need to do. I want you to find yourself on top of a mountain. No matter what the mountain looks like, it, it depends on what you are engaging. There's so much happening in the spirit. This extreme excessive energy, the fire, the glory of Yahweh is consuming nations as we speak, God's sons and daughters that's ignited with his fire is beginning to literally blow their breath into the nations. And it's a fiery, glorified breath that is in the full image of Yeshua as it literally spreads in to every corner of every nation, literally opening up portholes for His glory to ascend. Light beings are appearing all over the world. Yeah. And, and I thought it was angels at first, like I said last week, but it's, it's actually sons, daughters that's mature, that's walking in Revelations 1. I was driving over the Twin Span Bridge and the Father took me into the Spirit and where usually in my natural understanding I would go into this vortex of thunder, lightning and fire and it was this dark cloud and usually my understanding of something like that would be demonic I would picture myself seeing all kinds of demonic activity inside of this cloud but it's about a five mile drive and in this cloud, there was extreme angelic manifestations. Extreme fire, lightning, like a lightning show of different colors. An intense feeling of His presence. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I could feel like the veil uh, entering into the Holy of Holies, stepping and driving through this dark cloud. Now, it's the mysteries. It's the secrets of Yahweh that's being poured into a generation. That's being poured into a people. And as I was driving through this cloud, I was going through angelic beings. I was going through uh, created beings within the kingdom of heaven. Beings that we've never even read of in the word. Things that we cannot perceive in the natural. Just phenomenal beings that hovers around the presence of Yahweh, that I was there at creation. I was driving through some of the seven spirits. I was engaging with the living, the four living beings. I could find myself just going and traveling through every one of the living letters as that fiery gates propel and draw me deeper in. I could feel myself going into different dimensions of the angelic finding myself in uh, extreme fire, just burning. And I understood things. I had revelation of things. There was a pouring of who the kingdom of heaven really is. It was an ascension of the becoming one with the, the, the kingdom of earth, the kingdom of heaven, just ascending into each other. Sons and daughters beginning to understand. It's like a vortex of, 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 of the kingdom just blowing into the earth. I am excited. I want you to find yourself on that mountain. I want you to stand on top of that mountain tonight. Now I need you guys to listen. I want you to take your spirit man that's standing on top of that mountain. I want you to ascend into the mountain. Descend into that mountain. Now I want you to start walking around the inside of the inside of the mountain. And I want you to see what is there. As soon as you see, as soon as you see something, Say it out loud. Rubies. Gold. Diamonds. Gold. 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 Gold.
Father, we want to take gold that's in our mountains tonight. And we want to begin to honor gold. That which it represents. Cities, nations. Father, that which it brings to us, the knowledge that gold has never, will never, and has never meant to belong to the enemy. That riches cannot be of the world. Riches cannot belong to any form of demonic activity. Father, we have claimed and we have reclaimed gold back into the kingdom. That it will be in our mountains and we will begin to rule over it again with full maturity and responsibility. But we take back what the enemy has taken and no longer can this nation run outside of the ecclesia. No longer can any business prosper outside of the ecclesia. No longer can the nation hold on to gold as if it's not of God. Father, we blow the breath of Yahweh that's in us Ruach, over the gold in our mountains. Meaning that it's framed. Father, we take the diamonds and the rubies and we begin to trade on the sea of glass. I want you to see this. We gather it together and we bring it to your feet and we begin to trade for the nation, Father. We love this nation. Lord, I know that you've chosen sections of this nation to propel the rest of the world into what's coming. And so, Father, we need to have a knowledge of you. We need to have a deep, deep, deep knowledge and knowing of the deep intimacy that you long for. We need to understand and know your heartbeat for this nation. That it is love, not destruction. It is not doom and gloom. It is life and fullness of life. That Zoe life that you're pouring into us, Father. As you are restoring gold to its full place, as you're restoring the value of the ecclesia in the nations of the world. As we begin to take responsibility, we begin to run the cities once again. We take dominion over the fish in the sea. Oh. <laughs> I want you to see what's in your mountain. You know, many times I would go into my mountain and I would see a ray of, of light, yes. like a golden ray that just literally lights up the entire place, mountains. Yes. It's the most beautiful God that I've ever seen. As a matter of fact, it almost resembles Eden and it's just phenomenal. Sometimes I would go in there and I see all this beauty. I see all this gold and diamonds and rubies and all the stuff that, I, that I've gained in my walk as I've taken from giants and dragons, filling up the mountains like a trade for the nations. But sometimes I would go into places in my mountain, I would see utter darkness. And the Father would remind me that the process I'm going through needs to be in fruition. Constantly find yourself looking in your mountain. What's going on? What dragon needs to be slain? If there is any, why is there darkness? What are you doing? What are you pondering on? What are you thinking? Why are you constantly going in and out and your focus is the world instead of the kingdom of heaven? Yes. See, we are to think with our hearts and our spirit beings, not our soul and our brain. Many times we go into the kingdom of heaven and we begin to love and move and have our being there. As a matter of fact, you flicker in and out so many times so fast that you have one of one of three options 
You flicker in and, in and out of the kingdom of heaven so many times that your focus could either be in the earth. Because if you flicker in and out, you either see only the natural, the physical that you're used to, or you begin to focus only on the spiritual. And I so desperately believe the Father wants us to bring and unite the two and make the two one. Where I can literally be in both at the same time, experiencing both in its full capacity, with full knowledge, with full understanding, with full revelation of all that's really taking place within the kingdom of heaven, whether I'm in the night watch, whether I'm in my natural day, day to day walk. A full experience, a full knowledge of everything that's taken place and walking in that revelation. I want you to take a look in your mountain. I want you to find in your mountain your throne. I want you to sit on that throne right now. And you'll find that as soon as you sit down, there's a literal cloud of fire and lightning that begins to buzz around you. Like flashes. There's an exchange that takes place as the fire, but the Father begins to pour His glory in and over you. Because see, when you sit on your throne, you become part of what the Father has destined for you to be. A King, a Lord. You are positioned in your seat of rest where you begin to enlarge the image of Yahweh in you as you begin to entrust Him uh, with everything that you are. You begin to live and move and have your entire being inside of Him where He begins to consume you. Because in that seat of rest, in that throne where you have made Him Lord, <coughs> you sit consumed in Christ in heavenly places where he begins to erect in you the full image of the kingdom of heaven go ahead we begin to legislate from that place that which we experience in the heavens and what i love about the spirit of knowledge is it's knowledge that brings us to that place where we know him Father, we glorify and magnify your awesome name. The activity that's happening in the spirit realm, even as we speak, is incredible. We honor every angelic being in this place, Father. We ask right now that I may ensure that, that you will begin to open our hearts to see, to begin to understand and know what and where things are happening, how we can assist and be assisted by the angelic, how we work with the angels, Father, and understand that your desire has always been for us to walk with them. Father, that your desire is for us to engage in to these beings to such an extent that they begin to affect us. They are consumed with your glory. Father, we glorify your name. Thank you, my king. <coughs> well, tonight we just want to come together in your name and we want to ask that as we engage into the spirit of understanding, Father, the spirit of knowledge, sorry, into which we engage into the spirit of knowledge that you will open up our hearts, open up our hearts and begin to have an understanding of what this phenomenal being brings to us, Lord, as we love on you, worship you, magnify you, and are constantly reminded that engaging into any other being in the heavens 
does not take focus off of you, does not take any glory from you. As a matter of fact, it propels us deeper and deeper into you. It opens up our hearts to step into every dimension of who you are and so that we can begin to have knowledge, a greater knowledge of who you are in the heavens, Father. You are majestic. You are beautiful. We love you. We praise you. We honor you, my King. Thank you, Yahweh. Amen. Whew. How you guys doing? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, the spirit of understanding. I keep confusing these two. Yeah. And, and the reason being is you cannot have knowledge without understanding. That's right. <laughs> you can't have understanding without knowledge, right? But you can't have wisdom without understanding and knowledge. Right. You can't have counsel without understanding wisdom and knowledge. Yeah. Amen. It's like they just work together. Every one of these beings, the Father designed to such a degree that it propels you deeper into Him. And a matter of fact, I've said that, you know, even when I was busy soaking, I just felt a dancing of the first five letters as they were literally dancing around in the midst of us. And I love it. If you engage the Aleph, you begin to understand a deeper intimacy of who the Creator is. Same with the bait. Same with the Gimel. Now, Gimel is, is, is one of my favorites because it's the full supply. It's a, a deeper and deeper dimension of the kingdom. That's what uh, Paul was caught up into, into the third heaven, the full supply of heaven. And we have Dalit and we've got Hey. 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 How many of you understand? We step into Hey. A friend, a friend of mine, uh, Linda, she says that they were driving on the, uh, through a farm from area and she saw those um, hay, barley things and she went, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> and her kids just look at her and say, mom, you're strange. But we know what she was doing, engaging in the hay. Now, I don't want to go into this now, but understand that knowledge brings me to a place where I want to engage into the living letters. Yes. You know, when they start coming into a meeting, when they start opening up, uh, dimensions and realms for us to operate in and go into. We need to understand the Father's desire for us from the very beginning is to go back to the beginning. Yes. <laughs> in, in is that very first word in the Bible. And because the Hebrew culture takes us back to the beginning because that's what he does. He doesn't create the beginning without the end first. That's right. That's right. So when we look at in, that's his purpose. That's everything. That's what it's all about. It's going back in, into him. That's why it's the very first word of the Bible, in, because you want to go back there. And of course, in him is what came out of him. And the very first thing that came out of him is what he said. Right? The letters, that living, breathing, creative, life-giving dimension of Yahweh that he wants us to enter into, to go into, so we can begin to be propelled deeper into who he is. So we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. And this is the key. Matter of fact, it is the primary purpose of this being is to lead you to a deeper knowledge of who Yeshua is. That's why you want to step into it. That's why it's so important to know the letters. There's a book out, um, Friends of Eber. Am I right? Yes, that's right. There it is. Uh, you can go to... Um, the rockamobile.org and you can buy it from them I think you can download it I'm not too sure but I would urge you to get that book it is on the 22 letters yes. um, it's phenomenal yes. 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 
Okay, so we need to look at it. the guys who wrote that engaged physically, engaged into these letters. And of course, the letters propel it. That's why you want to step into the Yat, the Hay, the Shen, the Vaf, the Hay. Yeah. It spells Yeshua. Yeah. I want to step into it. I want to have a revelation of what Yat means. I want to step in and have an understanding of what Hay means. I want to step into the Shen. I want to understand every one of these letters because it's a fiery gate that I get to go into in the spirit. Yes. And of course, if you understand the kingdom of heaven, when you step into the Father, um, and I say the Father, but of course, you can't separate them in, in, in the fashion or form that we perceive it. Because when I step into the Father, I automatically step into Yeshua and into the Holy Spirit. It's just logic. Because they are the four faces. They are the fullness of Yahweh. Yeah. Right? So I step into the Father, and what happens is within Him is the kingdom, another kingdom, a different kingdom. And in that kingdom is all the letters. <coughs> and you'll find that naturally when you step into the kingdom of Yahweh, you want to live there. Yes. Yes. You want to just find yourself yes. engaging into these letters. Yes. Because it's what came out of Him. It's, it's part of Him to such an extent that we can't fathom, but these gates, these fiery gates, literally the explosive fire that comes from them is a drawing into. Yes. And the fire, of course, is revelation, because that's what these letters bring. Yes. I don't know why I'm hammering on the letters, because they were, yeah, they, yes. were, they were dancing yes. among us. Yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to try and do, and Leon, you maybe you want to go pray about it. Uh, I, want, I, want, I want Leon to take five minutes every time we start, and very short, very shortly, uh, express and explain the main meaning of each letter. Yes. Yes. Just five letters at a time, and let's just engage into this. You know, I have engaged with these letters I believe Leon and some of you guys have engaged with this. They are powerful beings. Yes, yeah. You know, we nowadays we're beginning to find that there's so many other creatures in the heavens that we have not experienced. Now the yes. Lord made it very clear to us. He said that which is written is limited. Yes. That's right. He said I couldn't even I couldn't write everything down that I said. I couldn't write everything down that I did. Right. Because if I did, it would fill all the libraries of the world. So there's much more said than what there's written. Yes. That's right. So let's engage into what is said, because what is said is living. Now I'm not saying what is written is not living, because what's written is the mind of Christ. It's the mind of Yahweh. It's, it's, it's the Greek word, uh, perusio. That's what logos means. It's perusio. It's that living word. It's that mind of Christ. That's what's written. But the spoken is the living letters. It's that dimensional shift that I make when I step into the kingdom of heaven. The, the fiery gate that begins to call my name. Why? Because they want to take me deeper into my Father. That's the knowledge yes. of Christ. The knowledge of who He is. Yes. That's why engaging into the seven spirits is key for the knowledge you need to propel and be propelled deeper into Him. Yes. So until we come uh, to the unity of the faith, now that doesn't mean that we all become Pentecostals. Or Charismatic. Or Episcopalians. Don't you just feel like you're sinning when you say that? Yeah. <laughs> Episcopalian. You Episcopalian me right off. Sorry, that's terrible. I was listening to a friend of mine the other day, and he said, I was listening to this preacher, and he was swearing the whole time. And I said, really? Oh, my goodness. What was he saying? He said, no, he kept on saying they pissed me off. And I think to myself, is that really a swear word? It's maybe not the nicest word to use, but there's a church called Episcopalian. <laughs> Some things are maybe just not as funny as what I think it is. <laughs> But, but the unity of our faith is the baptism into the unity of our faith. It's the, it's the baptism into unity. It's the understanding of, of who we are in Christ. That we, can, we can't continue to operate outside of Him. It's operating outside of Him that causes disunity. And of course we understand it differently because we think, well, well you believe this and I believe that, so we can't be together. But how many can understand? We're not, we're not together because of what we believe. We're together because of what we're in. Yes. Yes. I've got so many friends that I love that I don't agree with. But I'm one with them and I love them. They, we are part of the body of Christ. See, I always say that as long as your, your, your basics are right, then I, I don't particularly mind your logistics too much. But I mean, I'm going completely crazy. I'm going to ask you to shut the uppy. Right, but the, the idea behind... Us as a family and the unity that we as the body of Christ need to have is that we need to step into Christ. Yes. That's why the Hebrew culture was so intense when they would step in. When the high priest steps into the Holy of Holies, he would begin to sing. Yes. 
and it would, fa it would, it would face the, the four directions, north, south, east, and west. And every time he does that, he would sing out a letter with all of his breath. Yeah. And first of all, it would remind him that I cannot breathe without saying the name of Yahweh. Yeah. And as he does the four directions and steps into the four names, or four letters, he literally steps into Yahweh, into the fullness of Yeshua. And that's where it all starts, because that's where understanding of knowledge brings you to a place of full revelation regarding who you are in Him. Yes. It's a deep place. It's not what we were taught. As a matter of fact, we were told that we can never know him. Wow. That's right. Yes. That's right. I don't know. Help me, Help me, Jesus. <laughs> See, you can never know him if you're a soulish being. That's right. That's right. You can never know him if you're in the flesh. That's right. But when you get born again, you're no longer human. You become a spirit being. Once you become a spirit being, you have the ability to be like the spirit that you worship. Matter of fact, that's the image I've originally been created to live and move and have my being in. And matter of fact, as a human being, this flesh was never designed to be like this. It looks like this because of sin. Remember, we got skinned. Now, if you don't remember what that means, the Father, Yeshua, Yahweh never sacrificed an animal after Adam and Eve sinned. To close them. We believe that he sacrificed an animal, made atonement, and then closed them in a leather loincloth. But I only understand before all of that happened, they already made themselves close with a fig leaf. And that is also why before he got crucified, he did what? He cursed the fig leaf. But he didn't, cur he didn't curse the fig leaf, he spoke to it and said, You will no longer bear fruit. What was the fruit? It was the covering. And what it meant to be the covering because that was never the purpose. That's right. He was the covering, but because they ate the fruit, he could no longer cover them. That's right. That's right. So they had to take he had to take the glorified body and cover it with skin. That's right. He didn't cover it three layers, as a matter of fact, if you know your biology, it's three layers. Three layers will establish you in the governance of the physical. So when I get born again, I get born again out of my natural body into the spirit. And it's not born again, it's born from above. So I was born into the earth, but that's not his desire. That I need to step out of this natural, that's why it says I'm an alien. You can't be an alien if you live in a place. That's why I get born, born from above, I step out of the natural into the supernatural, I live and move and I have my being in him. So I get rid of the skin. That's the living sacrifice. What's one of the biggest steps of, the, of presenting yourself as a living sacrifice is that you get skinned. Now, as hunters in uh, Louisiana, y'all should know what I'm talking about. I don't know if I can do that, though. I'm having trouble killing spiders, and I hate spiders. Oh, my God. I found myself outside the other day, last night, actually, and as I went into the door, I see this... Black Widow. And my first response usually would be, oh, cool. But I looked at her and I said to my wife, you know there's Black Widows outside? She's like, oh, just leave them. They're harmless. No, they're not aggressive. Do you know that? You don't want to mess with them, but they're not aggressive. So I would have usually said, no, 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 no. Let's get that doom. You know, guys don't have doom. What do you have doom? Anyway, what do you call that? Boy. Bingo. I would usually kill them, but I just, I don't know. The, the closer I get to Yahweh, the less right. I can kill. Wow. Right. And I know it, it sounds crazy. Oh, what are you talking about? Are you soon going to be like the Buddhists? <laughs> worship all creation? No. no. The day I worship a cockroach, <laughs> <laughs> that is the end of me. And, yeah, I still think that it's, uh, if you see a cockroach, cast out a demon. If you see a fly, cast out a demon. And a mosquito, definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> guys. Okay, let me try and read the scripture one more time. Until we all come to the unity of our faith, of their faith, and the knowledge of God, the Son of God, uh, to the perfect man. Can we even begin to fathom the perfect man? It's in the knowledge of Yeshua that we begin to believe that we can be perfect. Yes. But what is being perfect? 
we don't understand perfect because we have a, 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 a perception regarding what perfect should be. And it's religious. Because the religious looked at Jesus and thought of themselves, you sinner. So with the religious mindset, you look at yourself and say, you sinner. <laughs> but Yeshua was completely different. That's right. Why would someone look at Yeshua Jesus and say, you're just like them? <clears throat> because his understanding of perfect was different than ours. Sin is missing the mark. Having a goal, a specific purpose, and not reaching it. Not what we've made it to be. That's why the Bible can say, to the pure, all things are pure. Yes. That's why no one around you, and I haven't seen it sometimes, but we don't greet each other with kisses. Right. That's right. Sometimes. But back home we do. Why not? That's right. We've got to go back to love. Bunch of pervs. That's right. I mean, that's, that's just biblical, right? Yeah. Anyway. Now, please. No time. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, we, we, the Father's desire for us is to begin to understand what is available to us. Yes. <laughs> you know, there's... Uh, there's so much I see in, the, in, the, in, the, in America that freaks me out. But in the same breath, there's so many things that's different. For example, in the gym, there's, there's a lot of people who would, would come and, and literally kiss myself or my wife on the cheek. Men. Right. Men. Right. I mean, right. I don't mind kissing men. I have absolutely no problem with that in any way, fashion, or form. Matter of fact, I have some male friends that I would kiss. Um, on the cheek, on the forehead. Mm -hmm. Praise God. But the idea is that we begin to understand who we are in Him. That's right. That's the right. unity, the love. See, we are not pure enough in our perception to carry on with what He desires for us. That's right. And knowledge brings us to that place. Mm -hmm. that's right. Because see, if I have the knowledge of who you are, and of course, that's what He wants us to walk in. Mm -hmm. It's a dimension of the Spirit where all things are exposed. But if I hide something, then you should be able to see it. And the judgment you then bring to me is judgment to life, not judgment to death. Right? So engaging with the spirit of knowledge brings you to that place where you know what everyone around you is going through and you love them for it and you want them to grow out of it, if not deeper into it. Depends on what it is. Yes, Lord. How are you guys doing? Great. See, that's the perfect man. Yes. It's his desire for us to know that there's a perfect for us to step into. Yes, you know, on, on Sunday, <laughs> Sunday mornings at about 10 o'clock, I do the most ridiculous thing on the planet. It's called power pump. <laughs> I think it's called power pump. It's an aerobic class that I do with my wife. It's just weights, but small little weights and thousands of reps. Um, it's, we don't get to do many things together, so that's one of the things we chose to do together. And um, this lady comes in late, and I know my wife, she's about to start helping her. You know, no one else would help her. No one in that gym would help her back out her stuff. It takes quite a while. So she's busy missing the clock. So my wife takes one thing, and so I decide to take another thing. And I could just feel in the spirit how people thinking to themselves, what are you guys doing? Why are you helping her? She doesn't need your help. And that's a mentality that we have. Yes. We don't want to ask anybody for help. We don't want to yes. do it. But you know what? You can sit in your f <laughs> car, phone the AA to come fix your, change your tire. <laughs> I don't understand that. Yeah. <laughs> See, when we start seeing Yeshua in that perfect form, we start seeing each other being that perfect. That's right. We don't need to be... See, I don't need my wife. And she doesn't need me. But we need to understand that. I don't need Jesus. Now you say, well, of course you need Jesus. Well, see, that's the problem with the church. We need. And so if you need, you are using and abusing. 
But if you understand the desire, see, I don't need her. I've, I'm going to be without her for two weeks. <laughs> She's going to go to Utah, and I hate just thinking about it. First of all, I, I, I hate being without her. We have been together for f 20 years. And the first five years, we were just together, and then we've been married for 15 years. And in the time that we've been married, we've both kind of been in full-time ministry. So we don't work like normal people. We don't wake up and go to work. We, 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 we are together all day long. You know, and so you would find, I would think, well, I'm, in, I'm dependent on her and she's dependent on me. But well, when she goes away for two weeks or I go away for three weeks or whatever, we quickly begin to realize, well, actually, I'm not dependent on her. I just want to be around her. Yes, that's right. I want to be that's with her. Right. I want to spend time with her. Mm -hmm. now, I don't need God, but of course I do need her. I need God and I need my wife, but I don't want to have that mentality Amen. that I think, well, that's the only reason I'm with her because I need her. I can't yeah. look after four kids by myself, but I can no problem at all whatsoever. Right. Right? But I want her. And the Father wants us to get to that place where we understand that That's the right. desire you have God. to be perfect, the desire you have to love those around you, the desire of being perfect rises up through the knowledge of who you are in Christ. That's right. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, if you understand that there's a fullness of Christ and we only have a measure then we need to engage into the fullness. And I'm not going to get the, 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 the fullness in the earth. But first of all, my knowledge of Yeshua on the earth is only three years. In his full-time ministry, the lack of, 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 of knowledge given in his, from his birth to him becoming 30. So the only really understanding I have is his birth through the prophetic. I have an understanding of what he did between, I know where he was, he was in rabbi school. But I only really know him for the three years of the ministry. And to be honest, if we understand the four Gospels, it was only 26 days. Yeah, so there's a very limited knowledge that I have of him. So it's, it's limited. But when I begin to operate in the kingdom of heaven, when I begin to step into the kingdom where he lives, where I'm seated in heavenly places in him, I get to know him through the engagement of the spirit to a higher level. Yes, I get to know him. Now let me tell you something. I know my wife equals her becoming pregnant and having a baby. So engaging with the spirit of knowledge get me, gets me to know him. It's a dimension of intimacy that I cannot get by just reading the Bible. It's a dimension of intimacy I can't get by, by just thinking of him or meditating on his word or worshipping him. It's a uh, dimension I go into when I'm physically with Him. Yes. Yes. Now, of course, remind yourself, because we have this mentality that intimacy with Yeshua is going to be in some way, fashion, or form sexual. It's not. That's why we're not the bride. That's right. And once we get that out of our mindsets and we begin to understand He wants even deeper intimacy than that understanding we have, He wants us to become the body, then things change, right? For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. See, wisdom and spiritual understanding goes together. That's two additional right. spirits that we've already taught on, right? Understanding right. and the spirit of wisdom. Yes. We cannot have understand or knowledge without wisdom and knowledge. Right. So we want to engage all of that. And of course, His desire for us is to know His will. That's why your scroll is so important. Yes. That you may walk, walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. That's what the seven spirits do. They increase your position in Christ. Exciting, right? Yes. Yes. Now, just, just to remind you, the word knowledge means to perceive things, learning. It also means understanding. That's how in unity these beings are with each other. It means you're willing, it means the performing and experiencing. Now, the spirit of knowledge will in, uh, empower you for position. This is what it kind of gets to because it's, it, it's all about the knowledge of Christ. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life which I now live um, in the flesh, I live by faith 
in the Son of God, by His faith, in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. It's that dimensional shift from the natural to the supernatural where I physically step into Him. Yeah. And I begin to know Him at a level that I could never know Him before. Yeah. You know, I've shared this many times, but I remember going onto the top of the mountain, M M Mount Zion, and there was a, um, I've shared it before, there was a, a ceremony by the happening, and I was, I was the key to the ceremony. And the Father was, uh, Yeshua was lying there, and He's waiting for me to come. And as my eagle landed, I climbed off, I ran to Him, and He was lying, so I just lied next to Him. And He said to me, it's time to become one. And immediately my thoughts was, it's, it's the marriage thing, you know, we have yeah. to become one. And he looked at me almost like shocked. <laughs> because that's my only perception of intimacy when it comes to marriage. Right, yeah. So he looked at me and he said, no, not like that. <laughs> and immediately I shifted into him. Immediately I felt his bones become my bones. Oh, I felt my blood running through his veins. Yes. I felt my, yes. my, my, my sinews, my, mm. my flesh Jeez. melting in with his. Now, it's a spiritual encounter, but I can feel how we become one. Yeah. And I begin to realize my thoughts changed because I could hear him think. Amen. I could hear him breathe. I, when I breathed, I could, it felt like he was breathing. It was that one. When he spoke, I felt like I was speaking. It's the growing into the Melchizedek order, beginning to understand that as he is the son of Yahweh, I become a son. As yes. he is the king, I begin to walk in as a king. As he is the priest, yes. I begin to step in as a priest. As he is an oracle of God, I become an yes. oracle. As he is a legislator, yes. uh, the one who brings the yes. kingdom of heaven into the earth, so am I. Because I step into him, I melt as one into him. I have a new knowledge of him because it's a different dimension of intimacy. The spirit of knowledge teaches us how to access the knowledge of God. And how to apply that knowledge of God to the world around us. See, the, the full knowledge of Yahweh changes the way you preach. It changes the way you teach. Yes. It changes the way you speak. Yes. It also changes when you speak. Yes. Yes. Because see, we can talk about Jesus a lot. But if you speak about Jesus out of time and space, you are just talking poop. That's right. That's right. A religious babble will stop someone dead in their tracks. Yes. And literally turn the other way. I don't want to hear nothing that comes out of your mouth. But a timely word is key, literally. Yes. So it gives you the knowledge on when to speak on the knowledge. Yes. <laughs> it enables us to become aware of the place to rule as sons of God and what to do with what we know. See, it's all about the knowledge. Knowing that you are a son, knowing that you're a king, reminding yourself that now that I am a king, I have to rule. And of course, as a king, you get a sphere of rule, a place allocated to you, a dimension, a kingdom, a realm, a place where the Father is giving you authority. But of course, He gives you authority according to your responsibility, according to what you have chosen to be responsible for. You know, I, I sold everything I owned. It wasn't that much. But sold everything I owned. I had to get my whole family out of my country. I was born in. I lived there for... 38, 39 years. I love my country. My country is beautiful. Matter of fact, I, I remember when I had to leave Johannesburg to move to Cape Town. It was terrible, but yet exciting. And I'm, I'm someone in the comfort zone. And I don't like moving out of places. You know, of course, moving sucks. I don't know if you know that. And they say that it's right up there with uh, divorce and death. <laughs> Depressing wise. So whenever someone moves, have pity on them. Right, it's not easy and it's not nice. But I remember having to move my family over to another country. And it, it was always in my subconscious, Americans are arrogant and I actually don't like them. Yeah. And then I've come to America and it's confirmed. <laughs> don't look at me with that tongue, I'm just joking. <laughs> but of course, I come to America and I fall in love. Now, I've been to America plenty of times before I moved here because it was part of the word. Um... But when I moved here, I became part of the, the earth, part of the ground, part of the legacy, part of what the Father has sowed into this nation. And so my love increased, my passion for the nation increased, and I begin to understand and have a desire 
a love that's undescribable. I can't express my love to the Americans. I can't. It's impossible because it's godly. It comes directly from him. I, I had to leave everything out. My, my kids are growing up without their grandparents. But I absolutely love this nation. And because it's on my scroll, this is what has to take place. And of course, the ability we have to rule certain sections, because that was allocated to me. I said to myself, well, I was born in, in South Africa. Why wouldn't my scroll have a sections of America up in South Africa in that I need to rule? Now, there is some sections that the Father has given me that I have taken authority over, that I have taken responsibility over, that I go to in the Spirit as often as possible. But in America, this is where the Father has already given me 24 states to have certain sections of yeah. and rule over it in the Spirit to do certain things that needs alignment. See, we need to begin to understand this fear of our rule. As a ruler, as a king, what is yours? That's right. Why are you faffling around things that's not yours? Therefore, you have no authority because you don't have a responsibility for it. And you're not operating what the Father's given you. You're just doing what they told you to do. That's right. Amen. That's a problem because why? We don't have authority over those places. Mm -hmm. Don't have authority over those things that's around us. Because we haven't taken responsibility. As a matter of fact... If you want to have authority over something, just take responsibility for it. That's right. Good word. It enables us to gain access to knowledge about the supernatural realms of God. How they operate and how they function. You know, it's, it's taken me seven years to get to where I am now. And I realize now that I know less than what I did when I started off with it. That's right. That's right. That's right. I know nothing. You know, one of my spiritual um, mentors, she made a statement on the Wednesday that I, that I was there. She says, where I am right now is the best place I've ever been, and I know nothing. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Stevie McGee, uh, awesome young man, he says the same thing. Where I am right now, I know nothing. That's right. That's right. As a matter of fact, Paul made the same statement. Yes. 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 Why? Because he says, I was caught up into the third heaven. Yes. yes. I was caught up into the full supply. There's things there that you cannot utter. As a matter of fact, he says, there's things that I saw that's unlawful for me to utter. That's right. What does that mean? Oh, it was illegal for me. The Lord has given me a summons saying, Thus thou shalt not speak of stuff what you have seen it. No, that's not what happened, right? He did not have words for what he saw. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Now, from there to, to now, there's millions of new words yes. to describe what we see in the heavens. Yes. And that which we don't have, we can create. That's right. Give it to me. Create it. Yes. And one of the terrible words we created is imagination, yeah. Yeah. Mm. which I hate. Because it steals from us. Yeah. That's right. Makes us think that if I imagine something, I'm making it up. That's right. Instead of the enlightenment of my understanding. That's right. Yes. Yes. And I, would be, I just want to remind you that your imagination is different than your fantasies. That's right. That's right. That's right. Fantasies, 90% right. of the time, is directed by the demonic. That's right. Where your imagination will be directed by your soul and your spirit. Yes. yes. That's why I can imagine things, and when I begin to speak of it, someone else can relate to it and say, well, I see the same thing when I go into the heavens. Yeah. And of course, my focus is always in Christ. Yeah. That's why it's the enlightenment of my understanding. It's the soul, eyes opening up. Wow, yes. wow, so wow. That's right, that's right. So deep. See, I also want to remind you, I've got, I've got one pair of eyes in my physical body. I've got one pair of eyes in my soul. And I've got one pair of eyes in my spirit. That's three. It's to establish sight. That's right. That's right. So if you really want to be able to see, you have to engage all three. That's right. Because all three eyes is in one place. That's right. How are you guys doing? I'm almost done. Spirit of knowledge also teaches us how to retain what we see yes. and the process and uh, the processes uh, and store, the, uh, to, to process and store the information until it becomes permanent in us. <coughs> you know, over the last seven years, 
There's no book you can quickly go read. Although Ian Clayton has some really awesome books and uh, there's some other, other awesome men of God and women of God that's got some great books out there that we can go read. Enoch is one of those phenomenal books you should probably be reading. You've got all the other books that was not, it's not put in the Bible but it's out there because it's mentioned. As a matter of fact, I want to remind you that Jesus as a rabbi studied all those books, That's meditated right. on all those books. He didn't only read the Bible. Matter of fact, there was no Bible. That's right. There was a Torah. Yeah. Yes, right. right? But there was many other books, many other scribes that was read. Some of them are destroyed, some of them we, we might never know. But in the same breath, I remind you that being a spirit being, you have the ability, yeah. you go. have the capacity yes. to go into the timeline yes. and experience what Yeshua walked in. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's, That's, right. Right. That's right. That's why your sight's key. That's, right. yes. That's why engaging with the seven spirits is to place you in position. When you're in position, you see what's happening. Yep. And if I stand right in front of something, I really can't see the whole thing. That's right. Right? right. Because I focus on what I see in front of me, and it could just be a figure. Uh, I can't see the whole thing. But as soon as I start moving around, as soon as I start walking around it, I see the whole picture. And, and with the image change. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the, the, that which I visualize changes completely when I start moving around it. That's why he wants us to understand, I am placed in the position that enables me to have a 360 view. So, good. Yes. so I don't just have to look at something in the way that I've perceived it previously. That's right. And unfortunately, that's what the church has done. We looked at one view, which was the Bible. Mm. But how many of you also remind yourselves that the Bible is just one dimension of the Word? That's right. right. When the Bible talks about the Word, it wasn't even talking about the Bible. Right. He teaches us how to meditate and receive divine insight and revelation into circumstances through visions, visitations, and dreams, and to bring God's will to bear on the face of the earth. You know, I would go as far as to say. That the Father wants to begin to have us understand what we can do when we see. You know, I, I also believe that there's much you can do when you don't see. You know, I look at it, there's a lady in the gym that's blind. Well, I guess she's blind. She's walking around with a stick. Either that or she's poking things. But she's blind, right? That's what I perceive. And she trains like a normal person. They never ask for help. She walks around the gym like there's nothing wrong. She has a, a way of doing it and, and she just goes. So she's like a normal person, you know. You don't walk past her and say, oh, shame, she's blind. She does what every other person would do. I guess her ears are probably more sensitive. Uh, she can touch and feel it. The senses is enhanced because she doesn't have sight. But I can promise you that if she can see, her entire life will change. Mm. Yes. So you'll be okay, and maybe if half the church is okay with not seeing, have a vision, yeah. Have a vision, yeah. Have a visitation, yeah. Have a dream and let someone else interpret it. Or live in the Spirit, move in the Spirit, have your being in Him, have your sight enhanced and all things seen and revealed at all times, operate in the full capacity of yes. the spirit and yes. live yes. in that realm as if it's right here. That's That's right. See, it's his desire for us to engage with the seven spirits because they place you in position to enhance you, yes. to take you to a new place where, where we can begin to perceive who we really are, yes. not what they've made us out to be. Exciting, right? Yes. Let's yes. think. Father, we just want to glorify and magnify your name, you're majestic. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for wisdom, counsel, knowledge, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, might. Father, these seven spirits are just incredible. And they have been so active in my life over the last couple of months. They've been so active in the earth. Just listening to the other teachers, the other men of God, how they talk, how they do things. It's, I can see in the spirit how they have walked with the seven spirits and that the knowledge 
that they preach from, the information that comes out of them, the infused knowledge that's in their spirit beings comes from the position they're placed in through walking with the seven spirits. That, that white light enhancing and burning brightly through your people. Father, we are so excited. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for our city. We thank you for our state. We thank you for our nation, Father. We thank you for every nation in the world. As the ecclesia begins to shine, the ecclesia begins to burn, we begin to go and operate at our thrones in our mountains. We begin to gather all that which needs to be gathered so we can begin to trade fully for the lives of the saints and those who still need to come to the kingdom and the knowledge of who you are, Father. We thank you for the glory in the earth through your Son. We thank you, Father, for the restoration of your image. We thank you that we are waking up. And so all creation is excited for the sons and daughters that are beginning to walk in their full capacity. It's exciting and we love you, Father. We praise you for it. We thank you that we are part of this time and season. Although we are stepping away from time and space. We're stepping away from being under the sun and the moon because we start living in the kingdom of heaven and legislating the heavens and the fullness of that kingdom into the earth. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, my King, you're majestic. Amen. Amen.